Yeah, and I'm finally with Gary Van Sayak. What a yeah, name that is. Yeah. Talk about that. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's Dutch, mm -hmm. and uh, my ancestors were up on the Hudson in, like, uh, the late 1600s, I think. And uh, the Dutch are actually the ones that settled over here, right? Exactly. Especially yeah, Staten ancestors. Island, because that's where I'm from. Yeah, you, you yeah. got it all covered there. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for correctly uh, pronouncing it. I appreciate it. Well, it, it ain't an easy name. Yeah. Definitely not. Okay, now you were actually born right here in New York? I'm from Pittsburgh area, okay. actually, originally, and I came to uh, New York in 1967 mm -hmm. when the first Topless uh, Go Go uh, club started. I started. Just in time. Just in time, <laughs> working up in the uh, mm -hmm. Sterling Hotel in Greenwood Lake, where everybody used to have to go to drink in those days because okay. of the drinking age. Were you a musician back then? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it was a what was the first uh, instrument that you picked up, Ed? Well, you know, they came around in fourth grade and stuck a trunk trumpet in my mouth, so that was uh, the oh, first in instrument. School? Yeah. In school? yeah, band instrument, and I stuck with the band. And my, it turns out my high school band director was a bass player and a mm -hmm. professional singer in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So he used to take me on the gigs and showed me the ropes on the electric bass. And so my parents went for an electric bass, so I started the bass in high school. And, took it from there okay now besides being a you're a singer songwriter you're an author uh you're actually an educator you're a teacher yeah. i've been around a long time yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. reason you know yeah i got around to a lot of the things that i you know that normally people put on their bucket list i've had an opportunity to do most other things i set out to do okay now how, when you started out in the bands what was your, like your first bands that you were into uh would you in new york well we had in new york or my just my first band in general we, uh, yeah we just stopped playing music uh, in the band uh, well, the, well, had, you know the typical high school you know garage yeah, yeah. band you know but uh i actually had a hit record with my first band in college a band called the dynatones we were mm -hmm. signed by hannah Barbera Records, which yeah, yeah. is uh, the Flintstone people, wow. and uh, it went to uh, number 100 in the oldies for 1965. Not the bedrock twist twist. No, this one was an instrumental called the Fife Piper. Oh, okay. Most people think, oh, you mean the Pied Piper? No, it was the Fife Piper. It was a it was a jazz instrumental with a with a six hold fife. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. Okay. Now, people that don't you know recognize you or know who you are. But they're gonna know right now. We also you had a history with uh, working with John Lennon. Now, how and when did you meet John Lennon? Go ahead. Well, I joined a band called Elephant's Memory in 1971, the year that John moved to New York, mm -hmm. and we had a little uh, rehearsal studio on Bank Street called Magna Graphics. Mm -hmm. And as you, most people know, John and Yoko first settled on Bank Street. They were literally maybe five doors down. Mm -hmm. So we we had mutual friends being. Uh, in that political days of the revolution, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, we were befriending people like Jerry Rubin and Abby Hoffman and those right. pe people. And uh, John was, of course, mm -hmm. drawn to those people when he first came to New York. Mm -hmm. So uh, Abby Hoffman and uh, Jerry Rubin both gave John a tape of ours that we had made on a radio station on Long Island called right. WLIR. I think it's still there. Yeah. Uh, so we had played a, a like a live set there with Billy Joel opening for mm -hmm. us. I guess he hadn't been signed by Columbia yet. What year was but that? Around seventy one. Seventy one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, John got the tape. They loved it. They thought the band had soul. It had all the ingredients that John wanted in a backup band or a band. Period. Mm -hmm. He had the I had the bottom heavy bass to cover mm -hmm. Klaus's kind of sound. We had the tremendous sax player Stan mm -hmm. Bronstein mm -hmm. to do the the sax stuff. And uh, Wayne Gabriel, what can I say? I mean, he didn't, he got, uh, he replaced basically Eric Clapton, which is wow. a pretty hard thing to do. But if you know anything about Tex Gabriel, he was yeah. an amazing player. God rest his soul. He passed in 2000. Was so. he the guy who played with Elvis? It was a Tex, no, right? No, I don't think uh, Tex ever played with Elvis, but he mm -hmm. played with Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Right, right. Uh, Wayne was from Detroit. Mm -hmm. and had played with Mitch Ryder in a band called Detroit before right. he joined the Elephant's Memory Band. Okay. Now, so, there was a lot of people in the plays in the band. How many were they? It's all together a well, lot. Well, right? th there was only five when John joined us, mm -hmm. but you're right. Previously, the band had record deals. We had a, a gold album for Midnight Cowboy, the so movie. So, actually, John joined your band. Well, that's that what was he your wanted band? to do. Was it your band that you started? 
<laughs> it was Elephant's Memory right. had been around. We yeah. had a couple of hit records right. on, as I said, the Midnight Cowboys soundtrack, and they had two or three record deals. But yeah, John, that night, we jammed till yeah. at the little studio. We jammed yeah. almost uh, all night and to our fingers were sore. And finally, John comes out about five in the morning and says, I'd really like to join your band. Wow. And we all looked around and went, what? That's not going to work. No way. So we, yeah, yeah. we sat down and seriously yeah. discussed it, and Yoko came up with the right. solution that we maybe we would just do a merger right, right, right. because she quickly scribbled down the Plastic Ono Elephant's Memory Band right, right. stands for P-O-E-M, poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So poem. just yeah. typical Yoko, right? She yeah, comes yeah, up yeah. with that little... Uh, yeah, but a little help from your friends yeah. is good, too. Yeah, right? so it happened. We, yeah, yeah. You know, and we were walking home every night going, is it still on? Yeah. Do we still have the gig? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So how many how many ends of uh, recordings did you do with uh, John and all used together? Like you started without John, you did a couple of albums, you had right. a couple of hits, right. but then you recorded with John. Right. Uh, how many albums did you record with him? How many? Uh, we started in with Sometime in New York City after right. we had done a bunch of live performances that everyone knows about mm -hmm. the the Dick Cavett show and Mike Douglas was the initial one. Mm -hmm. Uh, ended up doing uh, the in the summertime. We did the uh, mm -hmm. Jerry Lewis telethon. Right. I don't know whether people remember John's performance on there. That was right. after we played Madison Square Garden. Yeah. But we did a double album with Yoko mm -hmm. later on after yeah. the Garden performance uh, on Apple. We did uh, John produced an album of Elephant's Memory right. on Apple Records. Mm -hmm. That was done. So there quite a few. Wow. 72 and 73 were quite busy. Uh, uh, okay. Practically now, lived in the studio those two years. Now, the tragic day to, that you lost John, were you, were you working with John at that time? And talk about that, that experience of going through that. No, I wasn't working with John, but I had just spoken with him a few weeks prior. Right, right. Uh, I had actually sent him a, remember, cassette tapes? Yeah. We, exactly. I sent him a cassette tape of some of the material I was uh, producing and working and writing on. And he was very nice and called me back and said, you know, I love it. I'm, I'm probably going to be doing a tour after we finish this record, right, right. which ended up be Double Fantasy. Right, right. And I said, well, uh, hello, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, you know, it might happen because I'm not sure Tony Levin wants to go on tour. Right. And I, you know, I mean, I just take it from what uh, John told me. But now you were in New York at the time, right? I was, and uh, I overheard you talking with Jeff earlier about how you were almost on the scene that night. Yeah. So we have something in common. Right. Because I was on my way to a jazz club across the street from the Dakota mm -hmm. uh, and to catch an 11 o'clock set. Right. And as if everybody knows the details, mm -hmm. John was shot about quarter to 11. Yeah. So I was coming out of the Crosstown Street mm -hmm. by the Dakota, mm -hmm. a friend of mine in the car, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really cold that night, and yeah. we found a place just right in front of the Dakota, almost mm -hmm. directly in front of the door of the club called Paulson's at yeah, that yeah. time. But we only got inside the door, and the waitresses were already screaming because yeah. apparently we had yeah. just missed the, the police car right. pulling away with John in it. Yeah. And uh, so that was it. Within minutes, as you know, mm -hmm. people were mm -hmm. congregating on the street by the dozens and yeah. soon hundreds. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we figured, well, that's it. There's not going to be any music tonight. Oh, the music yeah. died that yeah. night for sure. Oh, so we just split for home and watched mm -hmm. it on TV like everyone else. Yeah. Of course, you guys were probably very close, right? You've worked together for how many years? I felt like we were close, John and I, because... Uh, you know, Yoko has that numerology thing going on, and uh, mm -hmm. she, uh, we, mm -hmm. she figures that both John and I, out of the whole band, were the only two number nines. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, she kind of leaned toward John and I hanging out. Uh, right. I would visit him at the Dakota and mm -hmm. this and that. But mm -hmm. basically, John was, uh, he liked my material. Mm -hmm. He chose one of my songs as being the Elephant's Memory single for the album that we Right. worked on the song called Wind Ridge mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was later vetoed by the record company but yeah. uh, we ended up re re releasing something called yeah. uh, Liberation Special yeah. but that but John never happened today exactly <laughs> but but John actually loved my song so much that he came in one night and had written piano lines mm -hmm. for it yeah. so that just totally blew me away yeah. and uh, so John is actually playing the the Wurlitzer piano mm -hmm. parts on that record mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you one more thing about with John. What, what's your fondest memory of working with John, and, and uh, do you still uh, in touch with uh, Yoko to this day? First, uh, with John, yeah, the, my favorite thing with John was 
what I had just cited about him playing the piano right, lines right. on my song. That was the biggest thrill. Yeah, yeah. But I also remember what one. What did he play? What did he play? When you he played were... piano and I played acoustic guitar. Well, and it was well, just Jim well, Keltner and the three of us in the studio. What were you jamming you? On my tune, oh, that okay. the song right. Windridge. Okay. And as far as uh, my most memorable thing in the studio, there was we were doing "Woman Is the Can I Say the uh, the N Word?" "Woman Is the N Word," <laughs> the "Woman Is the Nigger of the World" song, the single from that album that we did sometime in New York City. At one point in the jam, at the end of it, I just remember looking across the studio and the record plant in the main room, and John and I just caught eye contact. Mm -hmm. And it was that magic when you have a moment with someone. Mm -hmm. And from that minute on, we had the greatest rapport. And that was almost the first night of the sessions because wow. we were in there two weeks. Yeah. So that was kind of cemented our, mm -hmm. our vibe, mm -hmm. so to speak, for the rest of the time we were together, which was almost 18 months. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I wanted to mention how I met you. I actually met you at uh, Shannon. She had an art gallery and with May Pang. And I met you about two years ago. And uh, with your lovely wife, Eva, I'll, she's so dynamite. Thanks for mentioning uh, I'm just wanna, Eva. She's my rock. I'm telling you. She's yeah, we, really cool. We call her the Yaya -Ya girl. Now I know she's, why you, met her, you married her. <laughs> you, you better believe it. Her. I'm a lucky yeah, guy. Really cool, I'm cool a lucky lady. guy. Yeah. Thanks. And I want to apologize for you for taking so long to get together with you. That's that, right. Like you said, I can't believe it's been two years since that night. Yeah, but you, you honored it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm very honored to well, be I speaking with to. you. It's really bothered cool. me ever since, yeah. so I'm glad you came down. You thought, you thought about me. I appreciate yeah, it, Phil. That's I really, really cool, do. man. Thanks so much. Okay, now, well, what are you working on now? You're working with Jeff, and talk about that, what you're working on presently. And um, and I know you, you wrote a book. We're going to talk about that, too. Go ahead. Okay. Um, in terms of music, I'm busy with this tour, if right. you want to call it a tour. Yeah. Tours aren't tours anymore. Mm -hmm. You just kind of go out here and there. But mm -hmm. uh, I love playing right, right. with Jeff. I'm yeah. so honored to be asked to do this. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is to be reunited with Adam, our yeah. keyboard player from Elephant's mm -hmm. Memory. Okay. Uh, to be able to play with him after all 40 years, yeah, yeah. as Jeff mentioned, it's, it's excellent. been. excellent. I was listening yeah. to him. I was like, yeah, wow, he's he's a he's a killer player, yeah. and it's just yeah. such a pleasure. The drummer, to be with him. I like the drummer too, man. He's oh, got the man. beat. Oh man, Mr. Eminem, Prince, he's been all over the place. Springsteen, yeah. Alex wow. Alexander, what a great mm -hmm. what a great drummer. It's great for us to have an opportunity to play with him. Yeah, yeah. Steve Holly is on the record, right. as Steve well as Williams, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's out with Ian Hunter right now, so wow. hopefully he'll be coming in to do some things with us soon. But you also, besides working with John, you worked with so many other pe big names in the business, Mick Jagger, uh, Bo Diddley. It's, uh, hard to, it's hard to top John. Chuck Berry. Know. Yeah, yeah, Come we were on. on. Well, the Elephants Come toured with, Ch with Chuck for a yeah. couple of years, uh -huh. and all of that was came from yeah. John and Chuck yeah. meeting on the Mike Douglas show. Wow. So he immediately asked us to go out with him and tour with him. As everyone knows, John John couldn't get a green card, so he couldn't tour right yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. So we ended up doing a lot of gigs yeah. with, with Chuck. and you know. But I played in the house band at yeah. the Hit Factory right where we're sitting yeah, yeah. Uh, with Jerry Ragavoy, the yeah. famous writer that wrote Another Piece of My Heart for Janis mm -hmm. Joplin. And mm -hmm. we did hundreds of sessions here. And one particular one was with an artist named Howard Tate. Mm -hmm. who just passed last year and uh, that was uh, a well, great used experience. To record here this uh, besides this being Gibson it, it was a recording studio it still is next door right, right. Uh, called the, the Hit, Hit Factory, Factory. Right. exactly yeah and, and I believe that Adam, you did uh, record is that way you recorded a lot of the work or? I did as I was I was right. with the uh, with Atlantic Records is the house band right. we did all the, all this the R&B artists right here at the uh, Hit Factory. Okay now you wrote a book talk about the book Ed. The book Shortcuts. was just an idea to yeah, yeah, yeah. help my students. I yeah. teach students during the day, during the week, mm -hmm. and I have about 20 students. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I kept coming up with these little catchphrases right. to help the students remember stuff, mm -hmm. little shortcuts. Right. So I says, well, there's a book. Yeah. And I didn't want to write a tell-all book, so I figured, you know what, I'll put a lot of the cool pictures yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Lennon days mm -hmm. and kind of integrate it with the, right, right. With the, the lesson plan mm -hmm. book. It's really like a workbook. Right. But it's quite thick, and uh, it's been doing very well. I sell them to students, and it's been selling on my website, GaryVanSyok.com. So uh, we just gotta spell it out. So you know, you know, right? <laughs> That's right. You want me to spell it? I think they can find it. Yeah, they'll find yeah, it. They'll find it. All they have to do is Google your name. There you go. Right? Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, 
you also uh, you did a curriculum at uh, with Sam Ash. What is that? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, Sam Ash Music Stores started a school in 1998, mm -hmm. and I, Jerry uh, Jerry Ash was uh, nice enough to ask me to write the base curriculum for it. Mm -hmm. So we ended up uh, opening a school out in Edison, New Jersey, and it eventually had 850 students. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started rock and roll classes. I would take, you know, a keyboard player, a drummer, like and we would roll form fantasy camp exactly. Type but in 1998, you're yeah, absolutely see, right. You thought of it first. So I would so form the bands, yeah. and we ended up having 20, took, 20 rock idea. and roll bands in house yeah. with a 24-track studio yeah. that Jerry yeah, Esch yeah. provided. And we would record the studio, uh, the students, and every month we would have a student recital where they would all do a concert in a common area with the lighting and the sound system. School all of, of this. The first school of rock. Yeah, it really you was, right Phil. You're absolutely yeah, yeah. right. It was. Thanks uh, for mentioning it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. You did your homework, buddy. Well, you know, I, w I read nice. about you, but also I know you <laughs> for a little while, and, uh, you know, I've been reading up online. You know, uh, I'm on your page, on your Facebook page. And you. I'd like everybody out there to know about how they can find out more about you and do a little research and become your friend on Facebook. You could tell everybody on the uh, fan page on Facebook, Gary mm -hmm. Van Syak fan page, or you yeah. could actually contact my wife, Eva, Yaya yeah. Girl, yeah. on her yeah. page if you wanted to get a hold yeah. of me. And uh, also mm -hmm. the website, GaryVanSyak.com. There's a contact. I just I hope I didn't forget anything because yeah. I think I covered a lot. You, you I, did your homework. It, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was oh, great to see you in. Thanks for coming. Yeah, if you got anything else out there you'd like to tell everybody, I would appreciate that. If I'd not, like to tell yeah. them how great Jeff Slade is as a leader to yeah. work for, and I'd really appreciate it if everybody could come to the shows because we are rocking. Yeah, you are rocking. And, and I, I didn't good. realize that you guys just got, got this together, and it's like... I thought you guys were playing for years. It, it sounds so like good. it. I know. It sounds yeah, yeah. like it. I know. It does. Well, I want to thank you very much. I appreciate you, it. The honor's all mine. All right. Here you go. Thank you. And uh, you rock, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Phil. You're watching New York Rocks. Who rocks better than us? Nobody rocks like New York Rocks. We rock the best. Peace right. out, everybody.